do uh, exception handling in Python 3. We'll go over a couple examples in this notebook. Uh, the first one is sort of uh, what is an exception in Python? So I'm going to start by running this code cell here where I have the variable a, but I haven't set it to anything and I haven't previously used it. So when I hit shift enter on my keyboard and I execute that cell, then this first cell, number one there, has this red box that follows it. So the way I look at this is I usually start at the bottom of the red box and it says name error. It's the type of error that it ran into. And then it tries to give a description of what happened. So here we see the name a is not defined. So that makes sense. The variable wasn't set to a value, wasn't previously used, and so therefore it didn't exist. Okay, let's make this pink box appear sort of uh, more systematically. So we run the command raise exception. That's what really happened in the background. Python ran into an exception, and here we're going to um, print the string stop the program. So just saying we're going to raise the, there being an issue, so it's raise an exception, stop the program. That's the string. So that message there, we can get that pink box to appear. And you might think, well, why would you want this, this problem to show up in your program? Well, it's not that you want the program to, to have an error, it's that you want to be notified as the user that there was an error and that the program stops, rather than, say, for instance, crashing in some unexpected manner. So really what we're doing is we're causing the program to stop by raising an exception to let the user know that there's a problem. So as an example of that, if I have a, an if statement here, if 5 does not equal 3, so then it's a true statement. We want to raise the exception. So we want the program to stop typically if there is some logical condition that's met or not met. So we can use that basically to stop the program flow and, and indicate that there's a problem. All right, so sometimes uh, we, we want to create exceptions like this and other times uh, we can use existing known types of errors. So that's the, the next step here is called try except. So when we have the output of an input box, let's see if I can make that appear. So I can have an input box where I put in a number and that's fine, it works. Um, and really what happened there, you'll notice there's some quotes around this five, which means it's actually of a type string. So if I type that input, and I say put in five, it got back a string. So that, that that might be a little confusing in the sense that we put in a number, but we got back a string. And that's because the input box is gonna, re that function is returning a string. So let's try what happens if I put in like a list here. So it's gonna wanna put in what I think is a list. So we'll do four and three and one. Huh. Okay, so no matter what we put in, it just gets treated as a sequence of characters, even if that syntax represents something else. So that's important to know. Okay, so now if we are prompting the user for a number and we really do want to get a number back, then we have to convert the type that it returns, which is a string, into an int. So we'll put this int here. So now if I put in a number like five, it actually does, let's print x. All right. So now we'll put in here, we'll put in four. Okay, so that worked. Notice that that's slightly different than if we had put in the, the print statement. Uh, yeah, let's, if we run that same command and we do not have a int cast, then it it's, remains a string. So the difference there is that here when I run this command, I'm going to put in 5, and it converts it into a number, uh, and here it did not. Okay, so what happens if we try and take an input that is not a number and convert it into an integer? So I'm going to use the string this, and when I enter uh, that, I get back a value error. So the problem here is I put in a string it tried to get converted into an integer, and that failed. So it's got the, the green arrow here is pointing to this line, saying somewhere on this line, this 
condition happened. So there was a value error. And it even tries to tell us what the details are. It tried to convert it to an integer with base 10, but the, the string this doesn't convert to an integer. Okay, so back to the, the now we've got sort of the setup. So let's look at the try accept example. So we can handle errors with the accept clause. That's what the try accept is all about. So I can put in a number. So let's put in five here again. And what happens is I put the number five in as a string. It gets converted to an integer and then stored to a variable. So everything's good. And then I print this string, got it, with two line breaks. Now let's run it again here uh, with the word this. Okay, so this time, notice that there is no pink box that followed this execution cell. That's because we caught the error here. So we, we tried this, it failed. The exception was of type value error. And that's, that's now we're back into this clause and we're gonna implement this code here when we hit this condition. So it's kind of a conditional statement for uh, exceptions. Okay, so since, since we put in the word this, then we ran into this exception for the value error and we can print out this string and we then can print what the error message is. So we can still get back this same message here, but the difference between just running into an exception and doing a try accept is that your program doesn't uh, stop at that point. So we may encounter an error and continue on through the program, but maybe doing something different uh, without crashing. So that's the value of a try accept clause. All right, the next uh, sort of exception handling that we're gonna uh, look into is an assert. So that an assert, I think of as a, as a testable claim that you can sort of see whether or not that claim is valid in your code. So to demonstrate that, I'm gonna run the my var, I'm gonna store that variable uh, with the value five, and then I'm gonna use the assert statement to say, I claim that the, that the value of my var is five. And when that uh, is true, there's no output. So this is, sort of a silent success. And often you'll see asserts for like types to make sure that it is the correct type. Here again, because the number is five, I can say that it is an integer and that happens to be true. Okay, now with the value of five, I'm gonna make this a claim that my var is three and that will turn out to be false. Okay, so now we sort of recognize this pink box as being an exception, and the exception type was an assertion error. So you'll notice that the, the following sort of like space where you normally see the details, that's empty. So the error occurred, it's of a type assertion error, but there's no message. And that's because we didn't specify uh, what the problem was. So here I have an example where I say, I'm gonna claim that my var is equal to three, and when it's not, here's the message that should be printed. So now I'm causing an assertion error and I can specify that the output message should be this. So it's basically, why did the failure occur? That's the sort of message that I would wanna include here. And you'll say, well, assert, you could build that out of all the other things that we sort of have learned about, right? So like if I have um, a condition that's not met, so th this is a testable claim, I could rewrite that as an if statement. So like, if my variable does not equal to three, then print unexpected value, right? So like, uh, however you want to handle that. And then if you really wanted to replicate the assertion, you could say, um, raise an exception. So here, the difference between these two cells is that this one is just alerting you to the fact that the condition wasn't met. Whereas here, we're actually raising an exception and stopping. So this is effectively, this statement right here in Python is very similar to the assertion statement here. So the assertion, assertion is just a, uh, a more concise way of stating that, hey, this is a claim I'm testing, but it's equivalent to this. All right, 
So the is instance is the um, so if we, we check the type up here with an assert statement, that's pretty common. Um, the other way of handling that is with validating that uh, whether or not this condition is met. So it's also in some sense a testable claim. But here the difference is it returns in a Boolean value of either true or false. And it doesn't create an exception when the, the is instance is false. So if I do this, it'll just say false rather than raising an exception. So that's the difference between is instance and assert, is that this is returning a Boolean rather than an exception. All right, the last uh, sort of error handling I'll call type hinting. Type hinting is uh, commonly used in functions where you're passing in variables and you're returning variables. And the value to the programmer is that the programmer has some assumptions that are part of maybe they're writing their function. And the type hinting makes what those assumptions are clear to the programmer. So they're typically not relevant to a user um, other than to sort of help other developers who are reading the code. So a quick example of where you might see type hinting. Uh, we have a function called funky and we're passing in a variable. We have no idea what this uh, variable type is could be. Um, so we have to read the whole function and say, oh, it's returning whatever the input is plus two. So if I run that and I put in a value of five and I get back seven, so that's pretty straightforward. And not too surprisingly, if I have the string H-E-L-L-O and I add two to it, I get a type error. So the the value, what a type hinting looks like, is that if I have type hinting, I can specify that the input variable must be an integer and the return value must be an integer. And so when you run the function, nothing different happens. So you have to use type hinting outside of the, the code um, using a library called my, mypy. So I'm going to show you what that looks like. Uh, and I'm, gonna, I'm not going to run this cell. The cell would still also fail. Uh, but I'm going to basically convert this notebook to Python and then show you uh, what MyPy looks, what MyPy produces for error handling. Okay, so we're going to open a new terminal. And I'm going to convert this notebook. So I've just used uh, in the terminal Jupyter con no, NB convert. And I converted the error handling script. Now I have airhandling.py. And I'm going to copy this mypy. And I'm going to run the mypy against airhandling.py. And it'll tell me whether or not the uh, any type issues can be detected. So the output um, in the airhandling.py, it indicates that there's an error on line 22 which is that A is not defined, and that the argument to funky2 has an incompatible type. So that's because if we go back here, in funky2, we specified that the input uh, must be an integer, and we are sending it the string hello. So that's causing the problem in our Python script. There are ways to integrate uh, mypy as cell magics in Jupyter Notebook, um, so that's available, but uh, I'm not going to show that here. 